Okay guys, as you can see, they left me unsupervised. Today, I'm gonna go down to the wrecking yard, pick up an LS, put camera springs on some cheap China turbo, and make a million horsepower for like 50 bucks. That, my friends, is a little something we call clickbait. What are you gonna do about it? You wanna jump, you wanna get froggy? Come on, get some. Actually, it's not clickbait, because I'm telling you it's clickbait, so it must not be clickbait. The other reason it's not clickbait is because the low buck guys actually get something out of it. Believe me, I'm one of you guys. There's nothing I'd rather do than go to the junkyard, get some greasy old LS motor, bring it back to West Tech, put it up on the dyno, and drive Steve and the boys nuts. They're terrible, they're greasy, but they make a lot of power. So the guys with the, the low buck guys, the guys that go to the wrecking yard, put turbos on, what's in it for us? What's in it for us on a video that's about exotic intakes like a cross ramp from Edelbrock or a downdraft system from Speedmaster? What's in it for the low buck guys? Well, you guys get to grab your popcorn, grab your drink, grab your keyboard, and sit back and make fun of those guys that spend all that money on their intake manifolds. Come on, man, you spent more on your intake manifold than I spent on my whole race car. Maybe you ought to spend a little bit more money on your race car, at least on the safety equipment. But let's face it, I mean, they have a point. When they pop the hood, they want somebody to go, dang, Gina, that looks good. When you pop the hood on a ratty ass race car, nice turbo, probably makes power, but that truck manifold, man, that thing looks like ass. Now, I know you can make them look better. You can shave them and hydro dip them, but let's face it, you're just polishing the pig. So now the question is, you guys get to sit back, make comments, make fun of the other guys, but their question is, They've got LS3 intakes. These exotic intakes sure look cool. Cross ram, downdraft, looks the part, but do they make power? That's what we're gonna find out. I mean, that factory LS3 manif manifold is no slouch. So how do these guys perform on the dyno? Okay guys, as you can see, I'm trying something new. I've gone away from the backdrop. I don't like that thing. It makes me feel like a college professor talking to students. And let's face it, you guys aren't students and I'm definitely no college professor. I mean, I provide the dyno results but you guys provide all the comments, so I learn as much from you as you do from me. Hey, low buck guys, you paying attention? We're getting close to the test. You gotta be able to make fun of those guys to spend all that money on the intake. Although, you know what? They really are nice. Okay guys, now that that's out of the way, we can get to our test motor. Actually, two test motors. Test motor number one, GM factory LS3 crate motor. Now naturally, we upgraded it with valve springs and a healthy comp cam. Check out the specs. Now that comp cam, 54-469-11 works really well on an LS3 crate motor. On this motor, we tested the factory LS3 intake, the Elbrock cross ram, and the Speedmaster downdraft IR setup for the LS3 hits. In reality, this is part of a much bigger test. I ran all of the available EFI intakes on the same test motor. Maybe I'll do a video on that later, but right now we're gonna take a look at what happened with these two compared to the stock intake. Test motor number two was much bigger and more powerful. It was a 416 LS3 stroker. We started out with an LS3 block and added a full forge rotating assembly from Wiseco and K1. Featured a four inch crank, 6125 rods, and forged flat top pistons. Now we topped that off with a set of AFR LS3 heads and a healthy comp cam. Check out the specs. Now that cam was much bigger than the one we used on the smaller 6.2. We ran the factory intake on our stroker, then compared it to the Edelbrock cross ramp. So what do you say? Let's hear them all run and find out how they did. Okay guys, we got to hear all the motors run at full song on the dyno with all three different intakes. They sounded awesome. Everybody should be happy now. Let's take a look at the results. This is with the 6.2 liter LS3 crate motor with that Comp 469 cam in it. 
This is the factory LS3 intake manifold. And this thing produced 580, 581 foot pound, or 581 horsepower, and 523, 524 foot pounds of torque with the factory LS3 intake. As you can see, that LS3 intake always works well. Got a good combination of power and nice little torque plateau here in the middle. We like that. And we ran it all the way out to 7,000 just to see what would happen, just to make sure that any of these intakes that we put on might want to want to have a little bit more top end power. So if we take a look at what happened when we put the Edelbrock cross ram on there, boom, take a look at that. That's the red line with the Edelbrock. You can see the Edelbrock made more power from the very beginning down at 3000 RPM, more torque, more torque all the way up. And as a matter of fact, it had a peak of 543 foot pounds. But the interesting thing is it's pretty easy to get more power at one end or the other of the curve. But if we look out here, it also had more peak power, 590 horsepower. So it had both more, more peak power and more peak torque than the factory LS3 manifold, which is pretty impressive. This XRAM, uh, the, the Edelbrock cross ram, did really well, especially compared to the LS3, which is always a good piece. Now let's take a look at that Speedmaster downdraft. Once again, this is our LS3 crate motor with that 469 cam with the factory LS3 intake, 581 horsepower, 523, 24 foot-pounds of torque, nice little plateau there. Let's take a look at this comparison between the factory intake, see what happened after we installed that downdraft IR manifold from Speedmaster, designed to work with the LS3 heads. So that's the downdraft setup. Look at that, a lot more peak power. As a matter of fact, we made right at 600 horsepower, 600.6, so we'll call that 601 horsepower. But the added peak power up at the top cost us some torque down low. As you can see here in the middle part, there's a pretty big drop in torque at 4,500 RPM. Yeah, 35, 36 foot-pounds of torque. So that's a pretty big drop. This is the thing I was talking about before with a lot of these manifolds. A lot of the single-plane manifolds were the same way and the short runner manifolds. They tend to have more peak power, which this one definitely did, but they also tend to trade torque in the middle part of the curve. And as you can see, the factory LS3 intake was better all the way up to 5,900 RPM and then only beyond that. But really, most guys looking at this intake are probably not buying it because they want a bunch of extra torque. It looks really good and obviously it makes peak power. So they can say, yeah, this makes more power than the factory LS3. Yeah, they just don't talk about the torque down here. Now let's take a look at what happened when we ran the cross ram, the Edelbrock cross ram on the bigger stroker motor. Okay, here is the final test. This is another run where we compared the Edelbrock cross ram intake to the factory LS3 intake. This time it was on a little bit more performance oriented 416 inch LS3 stroker. So equipped with the factory LS3 intake, we're looking at 627 horsepower and 578 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, 578 foot-pounds. Again, nice flat curve, uh, torque curve there, a little plateau there we like to call it. So now let's take a look and see what happens when we added that Edelbrock cross ram. Again, much like we saw with the test we ran where we compared these two on the 6.2 liter crate motor, that LS3 crate motor with the cam, the Edelbrock made more power down low. We've got a little bit of a wavy business here going around 3,500. That's a sine wave. The Edelbrock made more power down low down at 3,000. Made more power, more torque from 37 or 3,800 all the way up to 51 or 200. Then we have this dip here right in the middle too. And we had that same thing, the same dip in torque there around 5,500 RPM when we compared the two with a smaller motor. So that seems to be a, a tuning effect of that cross ram. But it did make more peak power. So the peak power was all the way up to 643 horsepower. Peak torque was up to right at an even 600 foot pounds of torque. So this thing did really well. Nice job on the cross ram. More torque, more power. It's kind of a good combination. Looks really good. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did we learn? Wait, what's that behind me? Yeah, it's a tree fort. I built that for my kids. 
The only time they ever played it was while I was building it. After I was done, they lost interest. Nah, what are you gonna do? Okay, so what do we learn? I think my takeaway from this intake test is this. This is the first time I've ever seen an intake manifold compared to the factory LS3 make more power on the top and the bottom. So way to go, Edelbrock. I mean, that cross ram made good power and it did on both ends and I hardly ever see that. When I ran the big intake test on the LS3 stuff, sure, it was easy to make more top end power, which is kind of what that uh, Speedmaster IR downdraft did, made more peak power. But the problem is almost all the other intakes traded power down low. So they lost power to the, compared to the LS3 up to eh, sometimes 6,000 or even 6,500. And then they pulled away at the top, which is kind of typical. That cross ram from Edelbrock managed to do both, more power on the top and on the bottom. Now that we've talked about how great these intake manifolds are, let's talk about how not so great they are. Well, these are the problems I have. Like on that Edelbrock cross ram, you gotta buy two throttle bodies. Now it's not too big of a deal because it's pretty easy to come by two drive-by wire throttle bodies, the factory ones. You could even find those in the wrecking yard. But it would have been nice if they would have designed that intake to accept mechanical throttle bodies. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there that won't run drive-by wire stuff. They still don't trust them. And it would have been nice if you could put anything you want on there. Now, you saw what I had to do. I had to make my own drive-by wire throttle bodies and it worked well for the dyno, but it's not something you could do on the street. Okay guys, the problem I have with a stack injection are filters. I mean, if you're gonna be driving around a lot, you should have air filters on them. A lot of dirt gets in, it's gonna ruin the motor. If you're only driving 500 miles a year to cars and coffee, don't worry about it. But every filter system I've ever seen for any stack injection, it hurts power and it doesn't look good. I mean, you cover up all that ability goodness. Hey, low buck guys, are you making comments? Tell them they pay too much? Come on, get with the program. I'm Richard Holdner, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Do all that stuff so I can keep making these videos. Let me know what you think about my tree fort. Let me know what you think about this new process I'm using without the backdrop. Thanks for watching.